29 Absurd Solutions to Simple Minecraft Problems Problem solving in Minecraft is a weird concept, because the game is so open-ended, there are so many different ways to tackle an issue. And while most are straightforward, the ones that we're tackling today are just plain weird. And hey, the YouTube witch mentioned that no one has ever subscribed to the channel using their tongue. And for good reason, but if you want to take that challenge, sanitize your device and tongue punch that red I sub button below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one, with the popularity of 100 days challenges in Minecraft, it's become a lot more crucial to check your in-game time. And while most of us would do that through the F3 debug menu, there's actually a way to do this with redstone. See, using a daylight sensor on top of a dispenser filled up with blocks, then every time another day passes by, a block goes into the chest and tells you the number. I mean, it's certainly a lot more costly than hitting a button on a keyboard, but if you want to, it's worth a shot. Number two, most are familiar with this trick that we use to break through the bedrock roof, but we can use it elsewhere. Since this gets rid of any block that's underneath the piston, we could even get rid of end portal frames or command blocks through this method. Although, bedrock is the only practical option here. For example, if you want to break the end portal, you could just break the frames using a big mushroom. And that's so much easier than this setup. So while I guess this could be used on obsidian, let's be honest here. The slow setup barely makes me want to use this in the nether, let alone in the overworld. Just leave it to bedrock and call it there. Number three. Say you come across some diamonds while mining, but you don't have a way to get across the lava lake. Well, no worries, because you happen to have all 244 mineral blocks necessary to make a full jump boost 2 beacon. And after setting that up and the proper skylight to make the beacon work, you power it on and jump across with newfound strength to the other side. Yeah, it's a common occurrence, I know. And while it does work in execution, the theory has so many holes in it that I really don't see this as much more than a what-if scenario. Number four, corralling animals in Minecraft is easier said than done. Let's just say the AI is in a perfect system. And while crops should be the easy solution, not all of us have a farm on hand. So, for another solution, we could use a flint and steel. No joke, by lighting the mob on fire and placing a water source in the pen, you can bait them towards that spot to cool off. It does work, but it only takes the pig being a bit too slow before you're left with little more than a pork chop and a waste of time. Number five, gold tools don't get a lot of playtime. However, as some commenters are quick to point out, they can be faster than their diamond counterparts. And while that's true, as soon as you enchant the two candidates, that's all thrown out the window. An efficiency five diamond pickaxe is much faster than the gold counterpart. And while that's enough of a reason to use this, the difference in durability means that you'll burn through way more golden pickaxes just to mine the same amount of area. So while unenchanted gives the nod to gold, just spend your levels in time to get a fully enchanted pickaxe instead. Number six. Look, I love flying machines as a concept. It's a great feat of redstone engineering, and especially when you're trying to do something crazy like a moving base or a house. However, while these might work for those kind of displays, I don't understand using them for travel. I mean, just about anything will outclass these for horizontal travel, and unfortunately, they're not much better for vertical. In our Sky Limit testing video, we found out that one of these as an elevator works just about as fast as pillaring up one block at a time. And for all the hassle to set up this system, that's pretty disappointing. Number seven, when you're smelting things in a furnace, you don't always have to be standing there to watch it all get done. So to know when it's time to sub in a new item to smelt, you could make this system that plays a little tune every time that the furnace finishes cooking. Which, I mean, does work and it's a nice little detail, but really, just use a hopper and then you can have all of this super smelter system work without any of the hassle for you. And look, in all honesty, I actually like this redstone system. That's why we've shown it off in the past. But does it pass the practicality test? Not exactly. Number eight. If you're trying to get down from a mountain without a water bucket on hand, then there might be another avenue for you to choose, which is that if for some reason you're lacking a bucket but brought along TNT, then that's enough to do the trick for safe landing. Since they're instantly broken with a fist, you can break one and then place the other from your inventory without ever skipping a beat, which I'll admit is fun to pull off as a party trick. But all it takes is one wrong move or a blazes fireball in the nether to turn this whole thing belly up. So just stick to water and hay bales. Number nine. Before you get into Lytra, it's not an easy task to cross the different void gaps between the islands in the end. Though, that painful problem actually has an enjoyable solution. You see, as Simply Sark pointed out in 2018, another alternative is mixing together Riptide, Slow Falling, and Ender Pearls, then you can launch yourself hundreds of blocks needed to cross. Which is fun, but only right until the point where you need to get back. And then, it's a pain building the system again. So honestly, I'd much rather just fill up my inventory with stacks of cobblestone or something.
something. At least then, the bridges that I make would be reusable. Unlike this, where it's one and done. Number 10. Snow layers can add a good bit of detail to your winter build, but they're a pain to craft in bulk. So, a much weirder plan B could be to get a whole bunch of snow golems walking, or rather, dragging, around the place to coat it in snow powder. Which, to a degree, I guess is more resource effective, but the time that it would take to move all of these around is a big commitment. And even then, it's kind of like the fill tool in Photoshop. Good for filling out a big area, but I would hate to use this to write my name. Number 11. Anyone who's ever come across a silverfish spawner knows that these suckers love to crawl inside of blocks. And while most of the time that's just a pain to deal with, strange as it may seem, we can actually use it for mining. Yeah, no joke, all you gotta do is anger one of them, and that'll cause the rest of them to break out of their blocks and join in. Meaning, essentially, we can dig a hole without a pickaxe. But in practice, it's just ridiculous. So even though it works, the cost of your sanity to pull this off might be too high to pay. Number 12. Before you get mending on your elytra, phantoms are your only option for a restock, but some servers have insomnia disabled, making that way less viable. So instead of doing something simple like enabling those game rules, you could always just turn to a cat gift farm instead. Just place a cat over a hopper next to your bed, sleep for the night, and you'll get the membrane just the same. It's not exactly a speedy farm, but I guess it does save you the hassle of complaining to the admin, for whatever that's worth. Number 13. Piston doors look great, but they can be frustrating to set up. And sometimes you might just want to blow it all up and start from scratch. So why not make that a feature? If you're crazy enough to piece together a cobblestone generator wall, then you can use a TNT button system to bust through and use it as a door. Sure, this still uses pistons, but it's a lot more of a spectacle, to say the least. Just make sure you don't step too close, otherwise this will double as a defense system. Number 14. With piglin bartering, gold farms are a very helpful thing to have on hand. And while we normally build these above the bedrock roof, some servers patch out that glitch. So why not just get thousands of blocks of obsidian and build an overworld gold farm? And while you do sacrifice some of the efficiency to pull this off, it is quite the feat to build inside your world, and it'll finally give a use to that obsidian farm you have, so that's something. But honestly, why would you want to do more work for less results? I've got no clue. Number 15. Making an infinite water source is an easy concept, but not everyone always walks around with two full water buckets. So if you're in a place like the desert at the end, you're out of luck. Unless, of course, you have a cauldron and some glass bottles on hand, because then you can't find a solution. Just fill the bottles up in the water source, pour them into the cauldron, and fill it up to the brim. Then you can take out the new source block with your water bucket and make a traditional infinite water pool. So this would work, but it's so much more expensive than the regular method, and should only be highly situational. Number 16. Everyone knows that shulker boxes can be great for storage. Although, if you're tired of just leaving around your multicolored boxes, then you could always hire someone to hold them. Funnily enough, some zombies are entirely capable of picking up a fully stocked shulker box and holding onto it. And they also won't despawn since they're holding a player's item. Which I guess is nice, but as soon as you want to get it back, you have to kill them. Therefore, getting rid of your hired helper. So really, just carry around your own backpack. It'll be so much more convenient for you. Number 17. Swords are great for taking out different mobs. But when you get low on durability, the pressure is sure to set in. So if you don't want to worry about that, dragging around a bunch of iron golem bodyguards can also do the trick. And while I love how silly it is to bring around an Iron Golem posse to do your dirty work, all it takes is one creeper to roll around and the fun will end there. And honestly, for the 36 iron it takes to craft one of these things, I'd rather just make a sword and armor and do the job myself. Number 18. Staircases are a staple in a Minecraft house, and they're also very customizable. Some are fancy, some are straightforward, some go up to build limit, and this one, this one's just long. Or, more specifically, one of the longest staircases currently possible in vanilla Minecraft. If you thought Snow Layer's staircases were slow, then this puts that all to shame. And really, for the effort to set all of this up, only to climb one block, it's just sad, and definitely not practical. And I don't know what lunatic would want to put this to work in their house. We barely wanted to build it for the example. Number 19. Now, I'm all for saving time when you can, but sometimes finding the fastest path takes more time than it's worth. For an example, let's look at the Wither fight. Sure, there's some impressive ways to take down the thing, whether with firework rockets or falling dripstone, but while those do a lot of damage in a short burst, they aren't exactly easy to get. So why go through all of that effort when we could just trap it under the end's bedrock fountain? Especially when, to even pull off those crazy methods, you probably need it stuck in place anyway. Number 20. You ever get tired of placing your own pumpkins? Yeah, I don't either. But any person really looks 
looking to automate their pumpkin placing process? I guess this does do the trick. With two snow blocks out of reach from the dispenser, it'll still try to place the pumpkin for a snow golem, even if it wouldn't make one. And then, there you have it, an automatic pumpkin placing machine. Which I guess is functional, but I do not understand the point of using this trick. And honestly, it's probably more useful to use the intended method of making snow golems anyway. Number 21. If you're into redstone, or maybe you just want a bunch of leads, then a slime farm is on your to-do list. But if you're playing on peaceful mode, then it would seem that you're out of luck. That is, until you manage to capture a few hundred pandas. You see, these mobs, even in peaceful, will occasionally sneeze out a slime ball, giving you somewhat of a farm. But don't get it twisted, this method is painfully slow. So if you really want to build this, enjoy the two or three slime balls you might get in your entire lifetime, because that's about it. Number 22. Dealing a lot of damage in Minecraft is satisfying. Fine. But while it might sound like a dream to kill the Ender Dragon in one hit, the reality of building something like this is just a nightmare. You see, even though this crazy TNT arrow launcher might just do the trick, you'd have to be a mad person to build it. Even in creative mode, this seems like it would take a lot of effort to make. So truly, if you're looking for speed while you kill the dragon, just use beds. Speedrunners have already proved that's plenty fast for getting the fight done. Number 23. Emeralds are the quintessential Minecraft currency. And while there are plenty of ways to get your hands on the green stuff, this one might be the Lamest. The truth is, folks, if you want a slow burn emerald farm, then foxes are your prime choice. Every now and then, these things will snag an emerald for you, which you can then replace to them with a food item. It's simple to set up, that's for sure, but it's also remarkably tedious. Which, call me crazy, but something tells me this isn't your next ticket to a full emerald beacon. You might need to look elsewhere for that. Number 24. While riding into battle on horseback sounds great, Minecraft doesn't always make it that fun. Say, for example, you wanted to go through the effort and make yourself the perfect horse for travel. But starting off, it's not even the fastest method, and also, you don't get a clear stat readout for each horse, so you're gonna have to test them and compare yourself. And after putting in all that effort into both the breeding and the math to get the perfect stud steed, you're still pretty limited by most standards. So just stick to an elytra or an ice boat, those are a lot easier to tame. Number 25. Bone meal farms are almost a prerequisite for Minecraft automation. After all, who wants to wait for all their crops to grow on their own? But if you can't find a skeleton spawner nearby, then I guess fish are always a solution. Though the word solution here seems like a bit of an overstatement. You see, in Java Edition, there's only a 5% drop chance of bone meal from these things. But folks, that's not a bone meal farm. It's a fish farm with a bone meal bonus. So if you really can't find a spawner and you're still looking for bone meal some way, just use cactus or kelp instead. At least with those, you have luck on your side. Number 26. Normal hostile mobs do not mix well with water. So sure, that means that you could spawn proof your base using water instead of torches. But let's compare the two. One of them offers light and provides a warm, safe atmosphere, while the other makes it wet, a pain to walk through, and doesn't exactly mix nice with your redstone or decorations. And really, the only reason I would want to do this is for a Riptide Trident to use wherever I go. That'd be the only nice touch. But other than that, maybe this is further proof that you should just have an aquarium in your house instead of turning your house into the aquarium. Number 27. Look, I'm a fan of getting the best bang for your buck, but at some point, we gotta ask if it's worth it. Take this regeneration beacon, for example. Now, the way that it is, you don't get the full regeneration from this thing after a while of being activated, which is too bad, but we could fix it with a system to deactivate and reactivate the thing repeatedly. And I get that that would help you to regain your life slightly faster, but I imagine any time that you save was already wasted on building this thing in the first place. Number 28. The idea of a mob switch sounds like a dream, and the ability to stop hostile mobs from spawning is definitely worthwhile to pursue, but a shulker mob switch? That seems extreme. These are not fun mobs to be around even in the first place, so good luck trying to bring them over to the overworld while you keep them loaded. And while you could argue that any mob switch is frustrating to set up, at least something like a zombie villager switch can be helped with villager breeders and the like. But this? No thanks, I don't even like doing this in theory, let alone the execution. Number 29. Now, I've sung the praises of the cake ladder too many times to count, and while it does add a fair amount of speed with the right horse, is it practical? <laughs> no, not at all. The amount of cake that you need to make for this thing should be illegal. It definitely feels like a crime laying it all out in the crafting table. And then, to not only have your cake, but then eat it too? That makes this build more of a fantasy than anything. But it's a fantasy that I'll still happily use, in creative mode. And with that, folks, pet that red sub button down below, and have a good one, alright?